بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we are interested in function g from the set of positive real numbers to the set of positive real numbers function g should satisfy three properties g is log convex g of 1 is 1 g of x plus 1 is equal to x g of x if we focus on these two properties if we put x equal to 1 we have g of 2 is equal to 1 times g of 1 which is 1 if we put x equal to g of 3 is equal to 2 g of 2 g of 2 is equal to 1 so this is 2 if x is equal to 3 we have g of 4 is equal to 3 g of 3 which is 3 times 2 which is 6 if x is 4 we have g of 5 is 4 g of 4 so this is 24 and so on this means that if x is a positive integer then g of x is x minus 1 factorial what about the first property g is log convex what is the meaning of a log convex function function h of x is convex if for every x and y in the domain of the function and for every lambda in the interval from 0 to 1 we have the following inequality h of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than or equal to lambda h of x plus 1 minus lambda h of y g is log convex means that log g of x is convex before proceeding let's derive an interesting result regarding convex functions our function h of x is convex let's choose a less than b less than c a b and c are in the domain of the convex function h b is between a and c b can be written as a convex combination of a and c b is lambda a plus one minus lambda c for a lambda that is in the open interval from zero to one in fact we can obtain lambda from this expression if we know a b and c lambda is c minus b divided by c minus a one minus lambda is c minus a minus c minus b divided by c minus a this is equal to b minus a divided by c minus a h of b is h of lambda a plus one minus lambda c because h is convex this is less than or equal to lambda h of a plus one minus lambda h of c we can use this inequality in two different ways first let's subtract h of a from both sides h of b minus h of a is less than or equal to lambda h of a plus one minus lambda h of c minus h of a this is 1 minus lambda h of c minus h of a we have an expression for 1 minus lambda this is b minus a divided by c minus a our inequality is h of b minus h of a is less than or equal to b minus a over c minus a times h of c minus h of a b is strictly greater than a we can divide both sides of the inequality by b minus a we get h of b minus h of a divided by b minus a is less than or equal to h of c minus h of a divided by c minus a Let's go back to our inequality, and this time, rather than subtracting h of a, let's subtract h of c. h of b minus h of c is less than or equal to lambda h of a plus 1 minus lambda h of c minus h of c. The right-hand side can be written as lambda. Between brackets, we have h of a minus h of c. Lambda itself is c minus b divided by c minus a. Our inequality becomes h of b minus h of c is less than or equal to c minus b divided by c minus a times h of a minus h of c c is strictly greater than b we can divide both sides of the inequality by c minus b we get h of b minus h of c over c minus b this is less than or equal to h of a minus h of c divided by c minus a multiply both sides of this inequality by minus one so here the left hand side becomes h of c minus h of b divided by c minus b because we multiply by minus 1, the inequality is reversed. The right-hand side, when multiplied by minus 1, becomes h of c minus h of a divided by c minus a. Note that this quantity here is this quantity there. We can combine both inequalities and get our result. h is a convex function. And from its domain, we have the strictly ascending sequence, a, b, c, a, less than b, less than c. We have the following inequalities, h of b minus h of a divided by b minus a. We are using these two guys. is less than or equal to h of c minus h of a divided by c minus a we are using these two guys and finally we use b and c this is the greatest quantity h of c minus h of b divided by c minus b let's employ this result in our problem in our problem log g of x is a convex function consider positive integer n now n is strictly less than n plus one n plus one is strictly less than n plus alpha plus one and alpha is a number in the open interval from zero to one n plus alpha plus 1 is strictly less than n plus 2. Let's employ our previous result. Let's take these two guys. Log g of n plus 1 minus log g of n divided by n plus 1 minus n. This is less than or equal to. Let's skip the middle term. And then let's use these two guys. Log g of n plus alpha plus 1 
minus log g of n plus 1 divided by n plus alpha plus 1 minus n plus 1 less than or equal to. Now we use these three guys. This is the term in which we use this with that. And this is less than or equal to if we use these two guys. So we have log g of n plus 2 minus log g of n plus 1 divided by n plus 2 minus n plus 1. Let's simplify. This is log g of n plus 1 divided by g of n. And in the denominator, we have 1. This is less than or equal to log g of n plus alpha plus 1 divided by g of n plus 1. In the denominator, we have alpha. Then this is less than or equal to. In the numerator, we have log g of n plus 2 divided by g of n plus 1. And in the denominator, we have 1. We can multiply all sides by alpha. Recall that alpha is strictly positive. Alpha log g of n plus 1 divided by g of n is less than or equal to log g of n plus alpha plus 1 divided by g of n plus 1. And this, in turn, is less than or equal to alpha times log g of n plus 2 over g of n plus 1. Now it's time to employ the property that g of x plus 1 is equal to x g of x. This means that g of x plus 1 divided by g of x, this is equal to x. We can use this here. g of n plus 1 divided by g of n, that's n. g of n plus 2 divided by n plus 1, this is n plus 1. What about this term? Let's take g of n plus alpha plus 1. According to this property, we can subtract 1. And right here on the right-hand side, n plus alpha times g of n plus alpha. We can do this again. We can take g of n plus alpha and write it as n plus alpha minus 1 times g of n plus alpha minus 1. We can repeat and write this as n plus alpha minus 2 times g of n plus alpha minus 2. We keep decreasing the argument of the g function until we reach n plus alpha minus n, g of n plus alpha minus n, which is simply alpha g of alpha. What about the denominator? The denominator is g of n plus 1. And at the very beginning, we have that g of x, when x is a positive integer, is x minus 1 factorial. So this one here is the factorial of n. Our inequality becomes alpha log n is less than or equal to log. In the denominator, we have the factorial of n. In the numerator, we have the product k from 0 to n, k plus alpha. We ended up here by this alpha, alpha plus 0. And this is our first guy, alpha plus n. So we have this product here. And let's not forget g of alpha. This is less than or equal to. From here, we have alpha. And this ratio is n plus 1, log n plus 1. Subtract alpha log n from all sides. So 0 is less than or equal to alpha log n plus 1 minus alpha log n. This is alpha log n plus 1 divided by n. The middle term becomes log. Then we have this product, k from 0 to n, k plus alpha. We have g of alpha. We have factorial of n. Then we have 1 over n to the power alpha. These two inequalities are valid for every positive integer n. If we take the limit of 0 as n tends to infinity, that's 0. This term here tends to alpha log 1, which is 0 as n tends to infinity. By the sandwich theorem, we have that the limit of this term, limit n tends to infinity of log, we have this quantity here, this is equal to 0. Consequently, the limit as n tends to infinity of what we have inside the logarithm, that's g of alpha times the product divided by factorial of n, n to the power alpha, the limit of this quantity exists and is equal to 1. Thus, g of alpha is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of n factorial n to the power alpha divided by this product here. This is limit n tends to infinity factorial of n, n to the alpha minus 1, and then we have an n here. And from the product, we can keep n terms, k from 0 to n minus 1, k plus alpha. Then the remaining term is n plus alpha. Note that this fraction here tends to 1 as n tends to infinity. Our result is that g of alpha is limit n tends to infinity factorial of n, n to the power alpha minus 1 divided by, we have this product here. This product is alpha, alpha plus 1, alpha plus 2, all the way to alpha plus n minus 1. What we have here on the right-hand side is the famous gamma function, gamma of alpha. Recall that alpha is between 0 and 1, but this is not a problem. For function g, we know that g of 1 is equal to 1. In addition, function g satisfies the property that g of alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha g of alpha. This property means that if we know function g from 0 to 1, we can extend it to the interval from 1 to 2. And if we know the values of function g on this interval, we know what g is on 2 to 3, and so on and so forth. Now we have a full characterization of function g. Due to the uniqueness of limit, the gamma function is the only function with the given properties. Recall that when alpha is positive, we have the following representation of the gamma function, integral from 0 to infinity, u to the power alpha minus 1 e to the minus u du. We can use this integral representation to verify that the gamma function is indeed log convex. Consider lambda between 0 and 1. 
x and y that are positive, gamma of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is the integral from 0 to infinity, u to the lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y minus 1 e to the minus u du. This is equal to integral from 0 to infinity, u to the lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y. And let's rewrite this one as lambda plus 1 minus lambda. And then we have e to the minus u times 1, which can be written as lambda plus 1 minus lambda du. This is equal to integral from 0 to infinity. We have u to the x minus 1 e to the minus u. And this is raised to the power lambda. Then we have u to the power y minus 1 e to the minus u. And this is raised to the power 1 minus lambda. Let's apply Holder's inequality. If we have non-negative functions g and h, the integral of g h du is less than or equal to the integral of g to the power p du all raised to the power 1 over b times the integral of h to the power q du all raised to the power 1 over q, where p and q are real numbers greater than 1. 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1. In our case here, we have an integral of two positive functions. So this is less than or equal to integral from 0 to infinity. We will take this function. We will use p is equal to 1 over lambda. Lambda is a positive number less than 1. So 1 over lambda is greater than 1. We will take this term here and raise it to the power p, which is 1 over lambda. So this is u x minus 1 e to the minus u to the power lambda to the power 1 over lambda. So we just have these guys du. And the integral is raised to the power 1 over p. So this will be lambda. Then we have a second integral. This will be integral from 0 to infinity. We will take this function u y minus 1 e to the minus u or raised to the power 1 minus lambda. If p is equal to lambda and we use this expression here, then q is equal to 1 over 1 minus lambda. So that 1 over p is lambda, 1 over q is 1 minus lambda, and their sum is 1 as needed. So q is 1 over 1 minus lambda. And now inside this integral, we just have e to the minus u, u to the y minus 1. And then we need to take the integral and raise it to the power 1 over q. And this will be 1 minus lambda. Let's see what we have right now. Gamma of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y for lambda between 0 and 1 is less than or equal to, using Holder's inequality, this integral raised to the power lambda times this integral raised to the power 1 minus lambda. But what is this integral? This integral here is exactly gamma of x. And that integral is gamma of y. Our conclusion is that gamma of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y, lambda between 0 and 1, and x and y are positive real numbers. This is less than or equal to gamma of x to the power lambda times gamma of y to the power 1 minus lambda. Now take the logarithm of both sides, log gamma of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than or equal to, if we take the logarithm here, this will be lambda log of gamma x plus 1 minus lambda log of gamma y. Indeed, log of gamma x is a convex function.